Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and this program is about the expansion of our consciousness. And that's why I have these two beautiful women here with me today in Tucson, Arizona, at the Maribel Healing Resort Center. They've just written a book called Manifest Moment to Moment. I have Carol McLaughlin and Taj Paul. Love is not an emotion. Love is unconditional. Mm -hmm. And so therefore there is no boundaries there. Mm -hmm. But one way to practice developing the energy of the heart is to learn to receive, mm -hmm. not to learn to give. To receive. Receiving is way more people heartfelt have, than giving. People have to learn to receive. Yes. I think I'm learning that one. Me too. Because <laughs> yes. you're giving, you're giving. Yeah. We have yeah. to learn to, how, yeah. how have you learned to receive? Well, I, I'm trying to catch myself sometimes. Like it's, saying, oh, I don't, not, I don't you want You know, to. I can do it on my own. So asking for help when it's not mm. too late, but that could be that. But that, that can be also feeling safe enough that I can be there and receiving somebody without thinking what I'm going to say, mm -hmm. 10 asking seconds for help. help. Is that could be one way. Yeah. yeah, or feeling worthy. Worthy to receive. That I right. can receive this. Because when you're receiving, you're not in control. So it's always a little... Uh, so people who are giving <laughs> like to be in control. It, there's more, a little bit of that. I think there is. You know? It's safer. It's safer to give than yeah. to receive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's scary <laughs> to receive, you it know? It is, because then you think maybe someone wants something from me, yeah. or maybe uh, well, I don't deserve... Yes, yes I don't right. deserve. Deserving. Exactly. Those two. So, deserve feeling worthy is another level of manifesting because you're not yes. going to manifest anything if you don't yes. feel worthy of the exactly. manifestation. Exactly. Uh, that's another principle, right? Yeah. Yes. Feel and yes. another one is I'm worthy of honoring my desires. Mm -hmm. I really want to manifest this. That's a good one too. And I deserve it. And I'm, I'm setting my intent. Mm -hmm. I'm doing everything that I am aware of, and the book does a really good job of making you aware of some you might not be aware of. Uh, what you're saying is we can just receive if we just put ourselves out there. And it's surrender. there. It's there to manifest. Um, and there's nothing linear about manifesting. There's nothing linear, no. like it has to take yeah. these steps to no. do. Yeah. It's not linear. That's another principle. To That's manifest. constantly... There, underlying, underlying mm -hmm. it's through every oh, principle. Nothing is linear. So I want something. I don't have to do all these things to get it. It may just come. If would that, would that is that part of what you mean by nonlinear? I would set your intent. Mm -hmm. I would really like to dis to receive this. I feel great because I know I'm going to receive this. Mm -hmm. I think it would be fun to do this, and it might help. And it's fun anyway. So it's all towards the path. Huh? And the great thing is it can leapfrog. You, you just said something before that I was trying to integrate also. D worthy of having our desires met. Is that what you said? Yeah. That's what I have to integrate because uh, we're always desiring yes. and not receiving because we're always like they're wanting. Uh -huh. but, but the thing of integrating... Get having my desires met, that's a good one for me to integrate. How do I do that? Because I'm always, you know, desiring, and then when I get it, I, I say, oh, I'm still desiring. So it's like when you get something you desire, and you have to switch from desiring to having the desire. Well, I think desire having. is still going to be there. Yeah. But it's, it's maybe changing your relationship with desire. If, de if desire becomes like a tension and a stress, it's like, ah, then it's not fun. If there is joy in your desire, like, wow, I'm so thrilled, I'm desiring this, but then I that's think different. I, but for me, it's a constant reaching, yes. and then I just have to settle and also welcome having. But what I hear happens you. if no, you that's put into yes. exactly that scenario yes. the element of gratitude? So, oh, so when I manifest a desire, when I receive it, and then I'm gr gr have grateful. gratitude, grateful for that, then I let myself, that's good. Then is, that's the step. Mm -hmm. I let myself have it because yeah. I am grateful to the universe for having had it. I think that's a step that yeah, that, would that, be a step. that stops the constant desiring yes. and, and lets me own because I think we ha we're here 
to manifest the desires. That's what the book True. says, create the life you truly desire. Mm -hmm. So once we create it, we don't have to keep desiring it because there we have it. <laughs> but actually, wow. that's what's it's, so it's great. Moment to moment, though. It's, right. it's, no. it's moment to moment, and it's like playing music. Mm. That chord was beautiful, but I don't want to stop on that chord. Yes, but I, I want to receive the chord. Right? Yes, I you do. Not like keep listening for the next chord. I want to be in receivership. Yes. I, no, I'm yes. just saying that's the part yeah. I need. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. 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 Exactly. But of course, yeah, like if it's just that one chord, it would just not. So yes. that's the moment to moment. That's the yes. moment to moment. Which yes. is music. Moment to moment, it's not just one chord. It sure it's, is. Yes, it but is. But how do you? Well, as a musician, how do you? Yes, love each of the chords and know that there's another chord, even though you're enjoying the chord that you've just played. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's I a great question. It's a great question, and all that comes from me is just that absolute wellspringing of joy mm. to be doing that to be receiving the music to be in that place that allows me to do it and then there is so much momentum momentum is huge that momentum, momentum about what momentum about everything okay momentum about how you think momentum about what actions you take so if how there's you trust mm -hmm. good. there's a lot of trust mm -hmm. there so that momentum will cause other things to happen. I see. So, thank you. You're welcome. So in the body work and you're hearing yes. music, how is your work sort of like music? Mm. How is that? Isn't that interesting? So I see sometimes geometric figure, you know, well, like you're working on bodies. triangles, stars, or whatever, mm. and I use sometimes geometric figures mm. to shift the energy. Wow. I, you will use sound sometimes, mm -hmm. sound of my voice, because sometimes the sound has a very fast way uh -huh. to mm -hmm. shift energy. Uh, and then I use my inner guidance, what I receive, and a lot of other technique. But I think it's a mix of uh, when I almost like access your energy and it's not like I go into you, but in some way I'm just like receiving your own essence mm. and some of the stories. So when I say, oh, your mother showed up, oh, mm. your father showed up, it's like then I'm just allowing myself to connect to your soul frequency mm. and I'm just experiencing some of the things that you may have forgotten, some mm. of the things that you don't even remember. Right. And that I'm just, by just connected to the memory of your cell, your cell have tremendous memory for me beyond this lifetime. The cells. Yeah. That then I just trust it and I know so is it like to you're, be done. So you're hearing the frequency of the person that's you're similar, but yes. you're seeing it different ways? Yes. And so yeah. Yes. And I think there's another similarity. Um, I have a PhD in music and went to Juilliard and the whole nine yards and when I started channeling people's soul song, what I had to do most was get out of the way. Yeah. I had to let all that technique and all that yeah. this would sound good and all that thinking just pew, go. And you get out of the way too. Yeah, yes. as much as I can. I'm sure sometime I'm in the way, but <laughs> most of the time yeah. I get out of the way. Ah, and you get out of the way. Yeah. So nothing's in the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on a good day. That would, that would be great. <laughs> that moment all the time. to moment. You the know? person <laughs> is speaking to you in yes. frequency and yes. vibration. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and then you've been able to translate that to a book to have this person come out and manifest their desires. Yes. And when they do, their frequency is even um, more powerful. Oh, very much. Not only their frequency, but if you have a human being who trust their heart, works on their intent, does the exercises, that human being will impact many, many others because their vibration is different, how they talk is different, how they, how they inspire is different. Well, look at the people who've really manifested their souls, experience, you know, like Jesus or Buddha, mm -hmm. these beings, you know, they were human beings, but they yes. were able to align yes. with their highest yes. frequency and all the people they've influenced from that but now we're in a time where everyone can be that exactly and this is and it's interesting because that's part of the last principle ah. which a lot of time I don't know if you have experienced that when people go into meditation or spiritual practice they leave their body they leave their body you know they go into what I call la la land right and that's 
what they say, oh, I did meditation, uh, and for us, this is not really a spiritual practice. Spiritual practice, you need to be in, in your, your body. physical body yeah. to access your spiritual, so that whatever you call it, divinity or whatever that is. And so it's, it's important, that's one of the uh, things that we offer there, it's like pay attention, there are different techniques, particularly for people who start doing a spiritual mm -hmm. practice, that will help them to stay well, like in the body. What? It's going to be either sound, either movement, either specific breath. But for example, doing nothing and just focusing on the breath mm -hmm. will be the easiest way to leave your body. Because people, you know, the mind is going to be so loud mm -hmm. that you're not going to be here. You're going to be gone. I think that's a really know? good point. And people, we're not here to leave the body. We're here to yeah. anchor, integrate, anchor, anchor, yeah, integrate exactly. the God, yeah. the divine yeah. force yeah. Yeah. into yes. the body. Exactly. Because when we vibrate at our best, that's what we're echoing. That's what we're shining. Mm. Interesting harp is all about the vibration. Isn't it lovely? And it's angels. Each, and each string, though, is, is vibrating. You're mm -hmm. actually vibrating with the string. So each of us are vibrational uh -huh. frequencies sure. uh, yeah. that are here to anchor the divine. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I think that's a really good point. People uh -huh. tend to space out and yes. think they're being spiritual because they're spaced out. But they're really not because they're not here. We're I here know. to be here. Exactly. That's really. And important. I did a lot of work because I used to space out a lot mm. myself. So you know, I learned that How'd about you learn that? twenty years ago. First of all, that was Barbara Brennan and her teachings, uh, like stay, stay here. But all you know, through the Kundalini Yoga, it's a beautiful uh, practice to stay in the body and to right. access. So. You have to stay in the body. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. They don't give you a you choice. <laughs> But and so it could be Qigong, mm -hmm. it could be Tai Chi, it could be for some people some form of dance mm -hmm. or some form of sound. But I think that's going to be a little more engaging mm -hmm. to find your inner stillness. Sometimes you need to find movement to find stillness. But inside. how does that work with manifestation? Because manifestation is not logical, so mm -hmm. you better access things from the spiritual dimension mm -hmm. to be able to manifest the life you want. Mm -hmm. So, how you can practice to stay connected with your spiritual vibration and your physical vibration at the same time so that you can be... How do you do that? So one of the things is finding a right practice. Uh, I mean, when I say right, a practice that keeps you in both, both planes. Both, both connected yes. and in the body. Yes, that's yeah, one of the yeah. principles. No, I think it's time to yeah. embody the yes. divine, not... Yeah. reach towards it but bring it to exactly. here. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's exciting. And everybody's path there is going to be a little bit different. Yeah. Right. But everybody's path towards manifestation is different. Yes. Well, your path, I guess, is because when you play, you're accessing the divine, but you're, you know, you're physically doing something, yes. but you're also transporting people. Yes. Okay. With the music. Yeah. Is it okay to space out listening to music? Or would you like to be here? <laughs> I would want you to be impacted. <laughs> I'm impacted, but I did leave. Yes, in the at side some point we leave too. Up. That's okay. Because during healing time, you know, you access so many dimensions. Mm. I don't even know how to explain it. Mm. You know, I just let go of explaining. You may be way better than me to explain mm. what happens. I'm always figuring out. But, but that's okay. But it's different that I'm going to have at some point every day a spiritual practice right. to remind myself to keep those both mm. entities or dif uh, dimensions right. together and not disconnected. So, That's of course, good. we need to space out at times and so forth. It's part That's of the beauty. Good. Yeah. Good. Maybe we will cut to you yes. playing your heart. I'd love to. I
I want to tell you the message that I was getting, uh -huh. I was receiving. So th they were saying that your fingers make joy manifest through the instrument, and it uh. causes it causes angels to cry with joy. Uh. It was like I was over here like, oh can we God. remember that, please? <laughs> well, it's just I mean you have it, and 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 it's like. So and and I don't, I don't know I mean I'm not reading into you I'm just reading yeah. what's around you and you know you're not from here I mean if 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 there would be someone who would call someone and have ET energy <laughs> that would be you you are not you are not one of these people so so stop comparing yourself because oh, you are wow. you're a, a divine maestro that's what they're saying so wow. That's, 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 we yeah, were I mean, supposed to give the gift to you guys. You. Thank you so much. No, because that was, you just, you got it. You know, it's, well, I keep it's great you to hear it, you baby. play. You so, how could we sum up all this book and, and what could we do to inspire people to, to use this as a manual? Yes. Yeah, yes. And, and that's what we were trying to do. So, I would say that the, the title says Manifest Moment to Moment, which means that everybody has the potential in this moment to make a change, a thought, an intent, a desire, a connection with divine, and any motion towards that goal will change your reality. Wait, I don't think I got all that. I was spacing out. <laughs> <laughs> no, what did I say again? Made short, we have the potential to change what happens. To us and for us and with us. Yes. Yes. Okay. Beautifully said. Right. Okay. And so, and that potential is in every moment. Right. Okay. I think we know that. So how do we do it? So here, if you look at this book, uh, you don't have just to open the book and go through page one until page whatever, 200. Be grounded. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Which is a good one. So mm -hmm. you look at the eight principle and you say, oh, I just want to look at that one. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have three, four, five different exercises. Our wish is like out of that principle, there's at least one exercise for you that's going to speak to you. It's mm -hmm. going to say, oh, yeah, I love this guy. And then you may practice that a little bit. And mm -hmm. then you're going to say, oh, and I want to explore that exercise. What's a good so, grounding exercise? Good grounding exercise. Hmm. There are so many, but I'm just trying to look at what's a good no, one for you. <laughs> or anyone who's watching. It doesn't have to be for um, A good grounding exercise will be a form of movement. That will be my first choice. Okay. So, you know. That's it, not for me, is it? It's like if they can stand up. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about, you know, exercising, mm -hmm. but just starting to move. I see. And as they move, can they be aware about where the body stands, where the body is relaxed, what kind of movement the body wants to do? So starting to let the body lead instead yeah. of you the leading the body. And, uh -huh. That will be one option. And that's a real integration then of mind and yes. body. Yes. Spirit and body. Yes. And of course, you can talk to the artists, right? Yeah, there's, there's one that we use on stage constantly is to just imagine that your your feet have roots coming down from your feet to the earth, to deep into the earth. And that worthiness and that potential for excellence that's in every seed 
can come up through us and allow us to be a channel to inspire and talk and touch people. You use that on stage with musicians? Constantly. Mm -hmm. With the musicians you play with as well? And the people I teach mm -hmm. and the oh. actors mm -hmm. I teach and the coaches I work you, with. Is that what you do? You're, I mean, besides healing, you teach? I'm a professor and I, I professor tour music. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Distinguished professor of music. Where? Excuse At the me. University of Arizona. In Tucson? Yes. Oh, I see. Been here for 30 years. Mm. And I tour constantly. Uh, Russia, Thailand, really? just That's came exciting. back from Brazil. Uh, yeah, and almost everywhere I go I give workshops on uh, one thing I, I work a lot with is neuro-linguistic programming and which is using all your senses and how to be at your best when you're in front of 10,000 mm -hmm. people. How? You ground and you breathe and you trust your intuition. And you, you <laughs> trust, actually. Take off the intuition. You just trust. You just trust. I, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm partners with Harpo Marx's son. You are? Yes, and the only person who has the permission of the Har Marx brothers to play Harpo's music. Oh. So, I would love to hear some of Harpo's music. His music is wonderful. Can you play that? Is he, was he re truly, truly he a great was. harpist? He practiced three, four hours every day of his life. He mm -hmm. loved it. Was he really a good harpist? He was really a good harpist. He oh. never had formal teaching, oh. but he loved it. I loved Harpo. It was like a yeah, great and his his music is really hard to play because nobody ever told him what was hard. So there's chromatic changes and there's all this stuff because he just played what he loved. She can oh, play some. She can yeah. Play some. So so what? Um, one of the stories that I love is Harpo was a, of course a comedian, and when he was being a comedian, he was fine. He didn't get he nervous great. at all. No. He was great. When he sat at the harp, and you can watch him, mm -hmm. there's a moment when he sits at the harp and all of the facade goes away mm. and he becomes impeccably centered. And according to his son, he used to get terrible stage fright. Playing and the, the harp. Playing uh -huh. the harp because it mattered. It, the, comedy the comedy didn't went, matter. Right. No. But playing <laughs> the harp was his center. And he used to have to say to himself, I am here and the audience is there. If the audience was meant to be here, they'd be here. If I was meant to be out there, I would. But I'm here, and it's bigger than me, so I might as well just play. Wow, thank you. So. Well, so what can people take away from that story as far as their life? That you're here. It's great, it's beautiful, make the best of it, and, and trust that you are divinely worth um, what you desire, what you want to manifest. You are worth what you desire. Yeah. That's good. And what, how would, what would you like to say to people as far as manifesting their deepest desire? You know, pay attention first to your physical sensations and your, and your emotions. So listen to your body is one of your best teachers. That will be one way to go further. Listen to your body, but I think there's more that you can say as far as like integrating their... They're Inter integrating they're, the spiritual dimension. Yeah, and, and something and, that's and, and, calling them, I think. Find yes. Out what's find their, deep, their deepest joy mm -hmm. and, 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 and trusting it. Mm -hmm. It takes discipline to trust your joy in some ways. Trusting your yes. joy. Even, it may not even make sense. It yes. may not, you may yes. be the only one who enjoys yes. this thing. Yes. And joy is different than pleasure or, you know, like, it is. you know, people, yeah. Joy talks to your soul. Joy right. is when I'm practicing. Yeah, I mean, people might think that they get drunk or something, they're uh -huh. having a good, but uh -huh. that's not what we're talking about, no. obviously. Yeah. But how do we tell people the difference between those kind of superficial pleasures and real? I don't think we have to tell them. I think they know. I think <laughs> they know it's there. It's they're more just detached. Have to listen. Joy is more a little more detached. When you are joyful, mm -hmm. whatever is going on in your surrounding at that moment, it you just say, matter. "Oh, yeah, you don't really." I mean, you don't care in a good way. Mm -hmm. If you're into pleasure, you're attached to whatever gives gives right. you pleasure, and you want more mm -hmm. of it. When you enjoy, you're not saying, oh, I, want I want more of it. You're, you're just, just there have it. and you're present. There. And grateful. And that's the key to manifesting. Yes, one of the key. Yeah. Oh, so did we go went yes. through this? That's oh. good. Well, this is a beautiful book with two Thank beautiful you. people here at Maraval Spa. 
in uh, Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. We're going to end with Carol uh, yes. playing some of Harpo's yes. music. a jazz piece or something, right? He wrote it. It's called Harpo Woogie. That's a jazz it's an piece. It's original Harpo Marx piece. Wow. Can you play one more piece of anything you like? Mm -hmm. 